That's what we mean by none. It does not conduct electricity. So examples include pure water, benzene, methyl benzene, petrol, diesel, all these don't conduct electricity. Benzene is an organic compound, methyl benzene, all these are organic compounds. I ever ask the students that these are common questions in objectives or in paper two, they give you a question that explain why pure water does not conduct electricity, and yet impure water conducts electricity. Or why a solution of methyl benzene does not conduct electricity, yet uh, maybe ammonium hydroxide conducts. Those are some of the questions you expect here. You just say one is non-electrolyte because it does not ionize. Actually, it ionizes, it is a substance solution form that does not conduct. So these ones do not conduct, but the other ones conduct because they are either weak or strong electrolytes. They ionize partially or fully in water. So electrodes, these are the rods or plates or poles of a conductor at which electrons enter or leave the electrolyte. So those rods here, these two, the anode and the cathode, gives us the electrodes. Anode is a positive electrode, a cathode is a negative electrode. And that law is there in, uh, ah, which topic is this, that uh, like poles do what? Like poles do what? Repel. Then the unlike ones? Attract. Okay. So everywhere it is there, even here. At the anode, we expect to see negative ions coming here. At the cathode, we expect to see positive ions because the electrode is negatively charged. That is what we have there. So this is electrolytic cell. We shall see positive ions, shows you the direction of flow of current, but electrons flow the negative way. So that is just a sample of what we had there uh, for those who are not there. Ionic theory tells us or it tries to explain how charges come about. So ionic theory was put forward, uh, was put forward to explain the phenomena of electrolysis, how electrolysis happens. According to ionic theory, electrolytes are believed to contain electrically charged particles, those particles are called ions. Now, before you set electricity, they are wandering, they are confused in the solution, just like these ones. Explanation of the theory says, when current is not passed through an electrolyte, the ions are wandering randomly in the solution here. They are wandering, they don't know where to go. Uh, just like when uh, you a lesson is set and the host does not happen so people start wondering like that <laughs> so that is what happens then immediately the host appears you see people now being uh, behaving in the same way they become attentive the positive will go get attracted to the negative side then the negatives go to the negative, the, the positive go to the negative electrode, then the negative go to the positive electrode, that is the anode. That is what happens when you put current. So that is the ionic theory. Now this theory would be correct and good if all this happens. Now, if you change some things, in the solution. Now, this is where we look at this, the preferential or selective discharge of ions. This happens when there are more than two or three ions in that solution. An example is copper two sulfate. Copper two sulfate solution. That is, it has a copper two sulfate ions, copper and sulfate ions, then water also has the hydrogen and hydroxide ions. Now, this preferential discharge of electrons 
tells us which iron will be preferred to be selected for this charge on a given um, electrode. So when two or more charges reach the electrode, one is preferentially selected for this charge and the selection depends on the following factors. Number one, the position of the iron in electrochemical series. We looked at this one in detail last time and we found out that it behaves on the following. Number one, the iron that is lower in the electrochemical series is selected for discharge in preference to the one above it. We looked at the reactivity series that if a metal is more reactive up here, it is left out to be discharged on that electrode other than the one. So the one down is picked from the solution and is the one that deposited at that eh? electrode. Then also we looked at the anions. What happens? The sulfate ions are more reactive than nitrate ions, and nitrate ions are more reactive than the chloride ions. So if something has a sulfate ion and a hydroxide ion in them, hydroxide will be preferred for discharge than the sulfate ions. So that is the position of that element there. We looked at various elements or various examples of how that thing happens and we reached somewhere. Yeah. Now today our main point of discussion was here. The nature of the electrodes. Nature of electrodes. Now, based on what we had last time, when you electrolyze dilute copper two chloride, dilute copper two chloride, what is found at the anode and what is found at the cathode? I'm giving you about how many minutes? Uh, two or three, actually three, to give me the correct answers here. Two or three. Pardon. I want electrolysis of copper two sulfate using carbon electrodes, carbon electrodes, or platinum. Before we continue to the next one, that is the nature of the electrodes. Three minutes are enough for us to do that work. And we, I expect to see answers on the doorway after three minutes. Is it clear now? So I want to see the electrolysis of copper to sulfate dilute. Uh, not copper sulfate, but copper chloride, dilute using carbon electrodes.
mm -hmm. at the anode what happens yes I'm listening. Hey, 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 who is that one? At the anode, what do we see? Mm -hmm. Hey, what has happened? No one is answering. Mm -hmm. Chloride and hydroxide ions. At the anode, what do you expect to see at the anode? The hydroxide ah, ion. Give me the final answer. I'm not interested in that one. Mm -hmm. At the Hydroxy. anode, you expect to see hydroxyl ions. Hydroxyl ions. When the hydroxyl ions are discharged, what is the end product? Hmm? Mm. Water, and water plus oxygen. Water, water and oxygen. Very good. So, what do you expect to see at the anode? Isn't it oxygen gas, a colorless gas? Yes. With the what? Yes. How do you test for oxygen? The light set low. Very good. Okay. Then at the cathode? Cathode? I see. Copper. Yeah. Yeah. Copper ions. Is it copper ions or copper solid deposited? It's copper solid. Copper solid deposited. Very good. So you expect to see a copper solid at the anode. That what is the color of copper? Hmm? White. Is it white or brown? Brown. So we expect to see a brown solid deposited at the cathode and the oxygen gas at the anode. Okay. So when you are drawing that, you draw the whatever facing upwards. Then you put here your one electrode. Then this one also another electrode. But this one, you have to put some jar for collecting the gas on it. Then you connect this on what? So which one is the anode? Which one is the cathode? How do you detect or how do you tell us this is the anode and the cathode? So on this one, where the oxygen is going to be put is the anode and is a positive electrode. Then this one is a cathode. Then you decide from here, anode is always positive and then this one is negative. So that's how you, you draw your cell. This is our... Which electrolyte have we used? Then this is the oxygen gas. And then we shall see deposits of copper on this one. So here we shall say copper solid deposited. And then here oxygen gas. And then at the anode. This is a simple experiment to demonstrate how that one happens. Okay. So I think people are not so far from the answer. We are there. We said last time that uh, hmm? the share. Oh. Hmm? So this is the end product of that reaction. Now, if they tell you to write the half equation and the overall equation, I hope we can now derive them and write, isn't it? Yes. Half and the overall equation. Can we write them now? Oh, we are still stuck. Somehow. We are stuck. Okay, if that is the case, let me 
introduce another this maybe shelly will start talking from here now so shelly open the ears properly and hear so that next time you don't take off from the discussion here we have the nature of the electrodes now we have seen that most of the electrodes used most electrodes used are which one and which one what are the most electrodes used here in electrolysis which one we have carbon electrodes and what platinum isn't it very good these are the common electrodes used now if you make a mistake in chemistry and alter the electrodes this is what happens to them uh, different electrodes for a given electrolyte may cause different products to be formed at the electrodes this if the conditions are normal the electrodes used are carbon electrodes and then uh, platinum the reactions will be normal you follow the first st step or the first uh, whatever we looked at which is the position of the element in the electrochemical series now if they make a mistake to alter the electrodes an example is electrolysis of copper to sulfate solution using copper electrodes have you seen what they have changed have you seen what they have changed they have used what copper electrodes instead of our known electrode that is maybe carbon and platinum they have used copper electrodes now if they make that mistake you look at the electrode and then look at what they have given you here for you to answer a given question the rest have been let's look at this first one before we go there this electrolysis of copper to sulfate solution using copper cathode and platinum or graphite electrode anode this is at the cathode this is at the anode that one is okay we looked at them and this is what we found here and we found copper deposits and oxygen gas at the end of the day but now here when they make a mistake of changing this electrodes and they've only used the copper only copper electrodes everywhere this is what's going to happen uh ions present in a copper sulfate solution we have the ions present ions present in a copper sulfate we shall have copper two ions and then the sulfate what ions this is aqueous this is aqueous and then in this is the dilute sulfate, copper to sulfate then therefore we have also water ions so here we shall have hydrogen ions aqueous plus hydroxide ions which is negative aqueous following the same principle we said at the cathode both hydrogen and copper migrate at the cathode the cathode this is a negatively charged electrode negatively charged electrode we shall have uh, positive ions coming here both copper two ions and hydrogen ions migrate there now at the anode we expect sulfate ions and the hydroxide ions now due to the position of this this is what happens both copper and hydrogen ions migrate but copper ions are discharged in preference to hydrogen ions since it is below it in electrochemical series isn't it what happens yes isn't it what happens normally under normal circumstances hmm? yes hydrogen and copper all migrate to the cathode but 
due to the preference of or due to the lowness of copper and in the electrochemical series than hydrogen, copper is taken. So the copper two ions uh, will lose the two ions to become copper solid. That one we have already seen. Now take note at what happens at the anode. And that's why in this other uh, reaction here of copper to sulfate, they use the two things. They use the copper cathode, which is the same as we are using here, copper cathode. And then instead at the anode, they didn't use copper anode. They used the platinum or graphite anode or carbon anode, like that. But now here they have used both at the cathode and the anode. So they are using copper electrodes at both the anode and the cathode. So this is what is going to happen. At the anode, both sulfate and hydroxyl ions migrate to the anode, but none is discharged. So all this at the anode, none is discharged. None is, di is discharged. Why isn't it discharged? Instead, the copper anode goes into solution. This is anode of copper. This one we have used up here. The anode of copper goes into solution and what does it do? It produces more copper ions that come and attach themselves here on this. So this anode disappears in simple terms. This is what happens here. That it dissolves to come copper ions. This process is called electrode anodizing. The disappearance of electrode in the solution. Instead, you are forming one anode that has copper ions and then the other solution remains. So such a process in a favored, eh, such a process is in a favored, is favored in this case as it requires less energy than the discharge of ions. So you find that the anode finds itself easier to dissolve in the solution instead of getting the ions. It gets attracted to the other negative ions and this dissolves in the solution there and it goes and attaches itself to the other extra anode that was there. So it produces more copper ions to be attached to the other side. So you produce more copper solid on, uh, on the cathode and then this other one disappears in solution. So we expect to see this copper solid uh, turning into this, into aqueous solutions. At the end of the day, the overall equation is as this. So at the anode, none of this is, is discharged. So we expect to see copper solid going into solution to become copper two ions and the two electrons. So if you are told to write the overall equation, this and this, since this is two, these ones can cross out. If you add, if you add this time, we don't add, but we subtract the two. Hmm? Uh, there is a mistake somewhere we have written. There's a mistake somewhere. So if you add up the two, this and this will dissolve or they leave. So we shall have copper two ions um, plus copper solid this side. This, uh, we are using this other side and this one. So we are saying copper two ions plus copper. And this is aqueous, this is a solid, this one. It will give us copper solid plus copper two ions. That is our overall equation. Now, this is copper. There is a mistake in this equation. Now, if this one is gaining, is losing electrons to become a solid, this equation is okay. Now, if this one is dissolving in water, it will lose the two electrons. It, if it anodizes, it will lose the two electrons and then if you add these two equations, we shall get this. These two and two will disappear. Then we shall only have this and this, which is a copper 
plus uh, copper two ions in solution that will give us the copper solid at the cathode then at the anode we shall see copper dissolving to give us copper two ion solution mm, leticia your hand is up for the next thing yeah. okay so this is what happens there so during this experiment, the anode loses mass and the cathode gains mass. The loss in the mass at the anode equals to the gain in the mass at the cathode. So the, the change in the mass at either electrode is proportional to the quantity of electricity passed through the electrolyte. The intensity of the blue color of copper to sulfate remains constant as the process is a mere transfer of copper to ions from the anode to the cathode, i.e. the copper, the copper from the anode goes into solution as the ions replace the lost copper in copper to ions at the cathode. So overall concentration of the electrolyte remains constant. That is what you have there. So at this stage, that is what happens here. Now let's look at the second example here, which is electrolysis of dilute sodium chloride. Dilute sodium chloride. This is our fifth example. Let me remove this paper and turn it. So dilute sodium chloride. Now, if you look at this dilute sodium chloride at the anode and the cathode, we shall have this. Uh, we expect to see sodium chloride dissociating into ions to form sodium ions and the chloride ions aqueous. This is aqueous. When also water comes in as dilute, we shall expect, we are expected to see hydrogen ions, aqueous, and what? Hydroxide ions, aqueous. That's what we expect. At the, at the cathode, cathode, we expect to see sodium ions and hydrogen ions, that's what you expect. Then at the anode, we expect to see the chloride ion and the hydroxide ion. Isn't it what you expect? Yes? Yes, sure. Yeah, this is what we expect to see at the cathode and the anode. But now let's look at the electrodes they used. Now here they have used mercury cathode and the graphite or platinum anode. At the, at the cathode, they have used mercury. Mercury cathode. Then at the anode, they have used the normal one, which is platinum or carbon um, electrode. Now we expect to see changes on which on which on which electrode? Where do we expect to see changes? Is it at the cathode or at the anode? At the cathode. At the cathode, because we are seeing a different, a different anode or a different electrode being used, isn't it? At yes. the anode, we expect to see normal things, maybe oxygen gas, because chlorine is more reactive than hydroxide, so 